Hey there, everybody. It's Wayne DeFrancisco, and thanks for tuning in to the website, WayneDeFrancisco.com. We've got Sergio Garcia here, and he just won the tournament today. They uh, rained it out yesterday. Today's Monday, and they uh, finished it up. He birdied 15, 16, and 17, built a four-shot lead, and then... Uh, one by two over Tim Clark. Great, uh, great win for Sergio. Going to get him on the Ryder Cup team probably. So here on the right, uh, it's a swing that I filmed uh, back in 2007 or 8 at a uh, at Reynolds Plantation where they were doing a a, a deal for the new TaylorMade ball, and uh, I had the tripod and uh, Sergio was warming up. And I got to get behind him, get a good angle. I thought it'd be interesting to compare that swing to uh, an 8-iron that he hit. There's a 7-iron on the right. So he hit this 8-iron on the, uh, I think it was on 16. He hit a, let's play this one off to listen to him here. such as we're 
Sergio's head is against the green and watch it drop like that. Of course, if it's on a tripod, you can, and it angles right, I put it behind his hands here. You can see right away. Not as much lowering as saw him in the backswing, but certainly there it is. You can also see the, the head, if anything, is not backing up, it's going forward. The knee movement is not quite symmetrical. You get a little more left out than right back. So you can see that the, you know, because of the nature of his setup, with the weight centered in his, in his feet, and that much knee flex, he's probably not going to be able to push the butt way back. But you can you can see the pants edge slightly behind the line. So we're looking at you know the tendency is to deepen there. And when you look at the at the progression lines here from the shaft plane, we're going 60. 67 to 68. So, uh, you know, Hogan was more like 60 to 64 to 68, something in that neighborhood, although he probably wasn't at 60. Um, but he still had the same amount of progression. So, for Sergio, well, you can see the shaft is really perfectly plain there, very nice. Wrist is very neutral. And then the, the classic Sergio move is to bring the hands out at the ball. You can see the butt of the club perfectly coming down toward the toward the ball, and the shaft angle shifts to flat. So there he is above the ball. So from plain to flat, and then if we draw the line down, you can see that it will remain parallel and drop, even though the hands are coming out. You can see it is almost flattening a, a fraction more before it will steepen down. So the club is coming just barely in behind the hands, but watch this thing ride the shaft plane down. So let's do that again without million lines. And it, this is one of the videos that I show students all the time, you know, when it comes to the club heading into the ball and exiting. So I really like this as an aim point. It's not essential, but, you know, because everyone sets up a little different. Some people have much lower hands, different types of posture. Um, but as, a, as an image and as something to aim for, visualize where the hands are at address and then get them to pass by that point and arc the club around and close the base like that is something I really like. Another thing that I really like is the way Sergio uses his his lower body. So if you've watched my videos before, you probably have. I often talk about the the hip box, you can see it here. So anybody with their arms coming in that vertical, see that left arm is pretty straight down right here on the approach. If you're not going to get your, if the right arm is not going to get stuck behind you, you've got to create some depth in those hips and you can see it. Now you can really see that his left hip is deeper than the hip box there. That thing arc through. So, Sergio, as I have uh, talked to a bunch of people, um, is pretty much recognized as the consummate ball striker on the tour. And, and these are things that I really focus on keeping the head out. I mean, he keeps his head more than out. He actually leans into it. Hogan did the same thing. So, the head's out, the butt's back, creates room for the arms to come in close to the body. You can see that in the back swing we got a little bit of a drop and then in the forward swing we got a little more. Not a huge amount, but it, you know, there's only enough seven iron here. And if we look at right into impact, if you watch the head, it's going to rise as the hands come up. 
which stay nice and neat, which is something I only wish I could do. <laughs> now the swing over here on the left, he had a little cut shot, and it really looks pretty much the same. We can't really draw, like I said, we can't really draw the lines, but in a static position we can, you can just see that, how nice that is. See the shaft flatten. And then something that Sergio does that some other guys don't do, that thing stays flat for a bit. Now watch it, it's going to start to steepen, especially when he's going to hit this cut shot. So each line is going to be under the next. Now watch this thing exit. Beautiful. Another thing that's great about Sergio's swing is, is just the rhythm. When he hits the ball, boy, does he snap into the thing. It's pretty awesome. So let's take a look at a at a front swing. We have two I got two front swings that I actually took again myself. One of them was at uh, Hazeltine in a PGA that I played in, and the other one was at Medina in a, at a PGA that I played in. And uh, pretty neat, pretty neat swings here. Now it's pretty windy. You can see the trees in the background. This was on a uh, one of the practice round days, and I had my tripod out there again. And this is where we can really see Sergio's tremendous amount of lag. Now here's here's something he changed uh, right in this uh, couple of years. Uh, the swing on the right is Medina in '99 when he finished second to Tiger. He was only nine, I think he was 19 years old. So so what you'll see here is that it's probably a little wider in the back swing. Pretty close to the same there. Look how full this thing gets. Of course, different club. I'm not saying that he wouldn't have taken a longer shot back further, but you can see these days he's not getting his hands behind his head like he did back in 99. Now, here we have the consummate lag artist here. He's going to create much, much more angle. And again, something that I try to teach to take that position at the top and increase the wrist angle by the time the left arm gets parallel. And then the idea is to drive that, drive those hands past the ball with the right arm in front of the right hip. See how nice that looks. And then here's something that uh, Bramble Chambly said ruins everybody is the attempt to get a line of compression. <laughs> so, I don't know. Since most of the good ball strikers have one, you know, why not, why not try to get it? But that's pretty nice. But watch this guy over here. I'll play this at regular speed first because it's kind of fun. You can't really tell what's going on here. You just you can just tell there's a lot of club at speed when he hits it. But I always like to show people this swing because when you stop it, it's like sick. <laughs> oh, that. Try to do that with your wrist and still make contact with the golf ball. And there it is. I mean, he's been a great ball striker forever, so you know, this, kind of, this kind of swing is, is not... You can look at it and see what he's doing and, and try to emulate some of it, but, you know, it, it isn't going to look like that. Here's that, uh, here's that 99 swing from behind. You can see a little more drop and kick there. I think his hands don't, you 
can see it's higher there, and then the, the grip end here will drop down more, whereas nowadays it's going to come out more. I, I played it the uh, Congressional in the uh, BR one year. Uh, now it's the ATT, and I, I caught him hitting driver on the range, so you can watch this again. So, still pretty full there. This is probably 90, this is probably 2000. And, something interesting when you look at it from the from the side and you, you would think this is kind of a it might be a mistake it's interesting but he definitely will slide back with his hips I'm not sure if the camera I can't remember if I have my tripod when I film this one again we can check it out by looking at that post, yeah, that, that's stable. So I don't think I got the camera quite perfectly positioned, but I mean, one thing you can see here is, I mean, there's a lot of right movement in his legs. And by the time he gets down to the ball, he is not really forward with his hips. So that's something that's pretty different when you look at most tour players. So it, it probably will because he has such tremendous amount of lag, letting the hips slide off the ball and really not moving a huge amount forward. Here with the iron, you can see he's got a few inches there. But definitely drives up to the furthest left point after that. And you can see with the driver, he doesn't barely has any forward net movement at all until after he hits it. Now, that isn't something that I would ask people to emulate. Most people have a really hard time recovering from that kind of movement. And if you watch the head, the head is moving back too a little bit. A guy that hits it that good, you know, I've heard pretty much that the reason he doesn't win is the putting. But you know, if there's one thing that I might you know, that I would might do is that I would sh maybe shore up that right foot and, and not move off of it quite as much. So anyway, I think it's a great swing. 